Hello my little thieves, it is Phantom here and welcome back to another stream. Thank you so much for the stretch, Alcatraz. Uh, welcome to the stream, Alcatraz. Welcome to the stream, Ozzy. Oh, it's nice to see you here. Excuse me. Um, so today, of course, your host today is <laughs> Ying as usual. Um, and we're gonna start, uh, in a few minutes. We'll start playing the letter in a few minutes. And, um, Ozzy, keep your redeems of Mandarin to a minimal. I do actually want to get through this game. Okay? <laughs> Thank you very much, my dear. <laughs> I know how much you like that redeem. Uh, I'm doing okay. I woke up a few hours ago, and that's fine. Uh, I did some of my login things. Uh, oh, fuck. My English is not great today. Um, I did some of my login stuff today, so... Uh, I got that out of the way, um, and then I have to do my phone stuff after stream, and then I'll, uh, play, uh, we'll play catch up with, um, what is it, uh, uh Inktober, cause, uh, I'm severely behind. Last thing I did was day three, I do believe, so I'm behind by four days, um, so I have to do today's one, yesterday's the day before, and then the day before that. And I have to do tomorrow's one as well, so that will be great, great fun, great fun. I'm going, um, we're going to be trying out different things to see which style will definitely fit, because where my art currently, currently sits, I don't think it's um, the best. It could be better. And I'm going to try out different things to see uh, where I can put it to make it look the best that it can possibly look. Um, but that aside, We'll start the game in a few minutes. How is everybody? I'm I am personally doing great. I had food, although I was expecting kanji because my mo uh, host mother said, "Oh yeah, okay. Um, it's a veggie diet for the next nine days. You're gonna have kanji for all those nine days." Yesterday I had noodles, and today I had curry. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting those, but it's okay. And you know. When you're able to make vegan food and you know how to make good vegan food, you can at least enjoy it. Because that curry was the bomb. I'll, I'll be it. I'm not the biggest fan of Lady's Fingers when it's whole, so... <laughs> I'm cozy and depressed. But that's life. How's your day going so far? Uh, excuse me. It's going uh, so whimmingly. It's just a little bit tiring. Uh, for a little, um, a little bit, not too much, just a tad, uh, cause yawning, you know, <laughs> but I am, uh, doing my best here, um, uh, <laughs> thanks Alcatraz, it was a yawn, but I'll take the bless, um, I, I'm trying not to yawn too much, uh, but, you know, as of late, it has been a bit tiresome life in general um not stream stream is too much fun to be tiring come on um but i well, i try to keep my yawns to a minimal so when i'm here and just being myself the yawns do come with the territory unfortunately i've also forgotten to do something because um that thing the thing the thing um that data thing is not accurate so give me two seconds while I quickly adjust that um, because the uh, I want to include not just the donations that I get but everything so you guys subbing um, the earnings that I get from you guys just coming over and watching so let's just um, really quickly where's my typical progress there we go let me just really quickly do this and put it up where it actually is because I did spend some of that money before um, I thought about doing this um, but there we go that is that all right <laughs> okay so we're gonna start in a few minutes we do have a little donation down there and that is for um, that's for me to pay my artist uh, for both art and rigging of both myself and Min's live 2D. Um, and then the next donation goal will possibly be for an iPhone. Because you guys know VTube Studio 
does not work very well with a webcam or with an Android phone. I actually tried it earlier with the Android phone that I have because it's brand new so the camera quality is the bomb. I tried it out but they don't have eye tracking which is um, which is a pain in the butt. But it's okay. It's okay. Um, hopefully we'll get the fundings to get an iPhone myself. Um, and then after that I will um, proceed to earn or proceed to have donations and things our do next donation goal so I already have three donation goals uh, ideally this one should have been the first but I decided not to um, because I want to get Moe her money as soon as possible um, because she's she she was initially gonna work on the rigging for me for free however I wanted to pay her anyways so this is for that <laughs> But she's also now doing art because I'm not confident. Um, so there you go. And so, uh, and then our next donation goal would be for an iPhone. Like I said earlier, I would have to find like a cheap one, but one that is compatible with um, VTube Studio, obviously. Literally, the only thing I'll be using that phone for would be VTube Studio, which is so dumb, but okay. Um, and then our next do donation goal is for Yang! Uh, because, you know, she does so much for us, include draw our emotes. I mean, look at all these cute things. Look at, hang on. Look at these! Look, look at these, look at these, look at these, look at these. Look at them! <laughs> They're so cute! <laughs> and there's plenty more where that came from. If you're in the Discord server, um, if you're not in the Discord server, do join us backstage. Um, and you can see all of Yang's beautiful emotes <laughs> and use them. <laughs> Yang does a wonderful job. There are like old versions of the emotes um, where she sketched them out and I just lined and colored them. But the new ones are absolutely adorable and I fucking love them. And we, we must do the appreci of Yang. We must um, do funding for Yang. Yes, she is. Um, there's her Twitter. If you don't know her, go follow her. Go show some support. She does lovely art. And she's currently doing Spooktober. Um, so she's doing something different from what I'm doing. Uh, and... Hang on. Um, she's um, trying to catch up with Spooktober as well. Because I'm currently four days behind. I think Yang said that she was a, a couple days behind. Yeah, two days. Hi Yang, welcome to the stream. We were just talking about you. <laughs> we were just talking about you. Uh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get onto the game. We're gonna, we're gonna start. Nah, we're not talking smack. We're talking about your beautiful art. All right, let's open this game and um, get started. Yang Yang Mobile <laughs> gets me every time. Content warning: This game shows scenes that may disturb, be disturbing or triggering. All right, so we're gonna load the game. Boop. All right. We're at max with Rebecca, and I don't know how that happened, but it's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> Yes, you are adorable artists. You make beautiful emotes, and our donation goal uh, after this one and the next one will be to to get you your mun muns that I owe you. <laughs> I know you said you're doing this to support me, but you're not gonna stop me from giving you mun. You're not gonna stop. <laughs> I demand to give you the mun. Hey Yang, look, it's you. No, bitch, no. A buzzing sensation jolts me awake. My body still wants to sleep, to forget what I heard, what I saw last night. But it's there, nudging, prodding at me. Slowly, I become aware of how awkward my position is and the aches that accompany sleeping in a curled up position the night before 
Wait, what's wrong with sleeping in a curled up position? I love sleeping in a curled up position, bro. <laughs> yeah, be like, eh? <laughs> Excuse me, you wanna know how you can make it cozier? Just hug a pillow. <laughs> Just hug a pillow, simple as that. If I'd even slept at all, the memories are impossible to forget now that, now that, now that Rose is gone. They said it's easier when you say it out loud. Instead of the words... Oh wait. Instead, the words weigh heavier on me each time. She's gone. Gone. Because of me. Gone because of one letter I was too curious to look at. I should have been more careful. I should have just kept my mouth shut. I should have destroyed it before anyone else had gotten involved. I should have... The notification light on my laptop blinks incessantly. Incessantly? Incessantly. Mockingly. When I look at it... As if it's calling me back to my sense of normalcy. I check it, nevertheless. Out of habit more than anything. Him. You sleep like a shrimp? Yeah, let's sleep like a shrimp. I actually don't sleep like a shrimp anymore. I sleep like flat on my back. I used to sleep on uh, I sleep I used to sleep in the shrimp position because it just helps me like sleep better, but now I don't do it anymore. Okay. Excuse me. You're gonna hear me yawn a lot, probably, or at least you're gonna hear me say excuse me a lot because I did only wake up like four hours ago. Four hours ago? Is that 22, 20? Yeah, yeah, four hours ago. Alright. Uh, I do sometimes, when I'm in pain, I'll sleep in the shrimp position. But not all the time. It just depends on how comfortable I am at the time of me sleeping. A stretch? Thanks, Yang. Ugh. Okay. Subject. Strict attendance required today. From bleh, uh, Joanne. Um... To all BRC employees, in the light of recent, in light of in light of the recent events, there will be an all staff emergency meeting from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Attendance is a must. Company changes, new hierarchy, and policies will be discussed during the meeting. Everyone is expected to bring their own copy of the attendance log and sales report for the last six months to be submitted to your respective managers to review. We are expecting everyone's cooperation. Thank you, Joanne Ale Alice Schutz, Schutz, I don't know, BRC HR manager. Thank you for the kiss, Alcatraz. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you. If this were, th if this were one of those typical days, I'd happily comply and get myself to our office. Today, today my limbs just feel heavy. On one hand, going will keep me busy, take my mind elsewhere. On the other, the place in itself is a stark reminder of what my own fears have cost me. I should just... Ah! Uh, choice! Choice, choice, choice. Are there enough of us to do this? Sure. There's enough of us to do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Question. Home or work? Home. Work. Easy peasy. You guys got one minute to do this. You guys got one minute to pick and choose. Do we go to work or do we stay at home? Which one do we do? I don't know. I would, personally, I would just probably um, go to work. It'll take my mind off it. 
even if the even if the place itself is a reminder of what's happened, it will take my mind off it. But um, staying at home is also an option, and I would always just decide to stay at home if I could. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? What choices do we make? Where do we go? Do we stay home? Do we work? Or do we just lie here and contemplate what we should do for the next three hours? <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to do that. Oh, I guess we stay at home. I guess we stay at home. My hand automatically moves to press the delete button. What's the use? I won't be able to work anyway. Not with this weighing on me. Not with the image f images flashing in my mind. Not with these voices calling for me. Over and over and over. I flop back down on my bed and discard the phone and the nest of pillows beside me. The TV is still running. I notice vaguely. Having been left open the night before, though I have no desire nor interest in it now. Rose is dead, and it's all my fault. Shoving a pillow over my head, I make an attempt to sleep again. Anything just so I won't feel this heavy feeling in my chest. A cheerful voice with a tinge of hesitance greets me when I answer the sudden call. Hey there! How... Uh, how are you feeling? Good morning, Becca. Just... I just want to check on you. I heard the news. How are you doing? It's as if her question just opened a dam of emotions I've been keeping at bay. Becca... Rose... Rose, she... Shh. It's okay. I know. I'm sorry. I know how much she means to you. No, you don't understand! This is what I've been telling you guys! What you've been telling- Alright, alright. Tell you what. Why don't we eat dinner together today? I heard the diner near your office is serving your favorite today. My treat? Um, decline her offer, meet up with her. Uh, I'm going to meet- up with Becca, because I feel like we should tell someone. Everyone in agreement? <laughs> Give me a yes in chat for ya. <laughs> Give me a yes in chat for, for meeting up with her. If not, we'll pick something else. I kind of think that meeting up with her would be the good choice. I'm going to meet up with her. Let's do that. Yee. Perhaps it's better to talk to Becca about this in person, not over the phone when and when I'm calm. It's not too late. She might still listen to a reasonable explanation. Okay, okay. I'll meet you after school. So long as you don't make me pay, okay? I've already treated you to free food the other day. <laughs> you know I'm not like that. If there's anyone who should be complaining here, it's me! But promise me you'll stay safe, all right? What's gotten into you? I don't think that's necessary, considering I'll be at school the whole day. I'll wait for you here, understood? Don't be late. I can only stay until... Promise me. If something bad happens, you'll run and... The Luxbomb Police Department continues its search for the following reported missing people. <clears throat> all right, let's see. I lift the phone away from my ear and turn my attention to the news. Never mind that Becca is still on the line. These faces. Hold on a sec. Missing? Aren't they? Becca, I'll, I'll call you back. There's something I have to look up. Wait, Isabella, what are you... Frantic, I press the end call button and open my laptop. The loud tapping of my fingers against the keys filled the room for the rest of the day as I look through everything. The background about the place, its history, from the current owners to the list of employees hired under BRC. And I'm right. Of course I am! 
BRC may have a lot of staff. They may have a lot of agents hired, but I remem I'd remember those names anywhere. After all, they're part of the crew who worked with us in preparing the mansion for the open house. Still, I've got to check. One by one, call after call, I go through each person missing on the list. This isn't anything illegal, right? I'm just someone concerned for their fellow co-worker. The night has fallen by the time I've gotten through the whole thing. They're gone. They're really gone. No one knows where, but they're gone. Then the letters... No, that can't be. I hope it's not what I'm thinking. But Rose is... Something snaps into place in the fraction of a moment. These people and Rose. I need to tell someone. They need to know. Ash, Zach, Becca. That's right. We agreed to meet. She needs to know. Of course. Of course. The letter, my phone, papers, anything that, that will be useful. I grab them all. I grab all of them and make a run for the nearest bus stop. I'm already late. <laughs> Isabella Santos holed herself in, in her apartment the whole day after the devastating news of her mentor's death. More disappearances were reported that morning. Most of them faces she's familiar with. After talking, after talking to Rebecca Gales, she agreed to meet her for dinner, but... Uh, a jingle? Thanks, I'd up. There you go. I'm already late. Becca must be really annoyed at me. But maybe... Maybe if I use the subway, I can still get to her before her patience snaps. I run As I run, I bring up my phone to my ear. Her number is already being dialed. Each rings in sync with the quick tapping of my foot against the pavement. The sound taking away the edge from the agonizing weight. She's not answering. I turn to the nearest shortcut I know. A small street Becca has warned me to never take before. No lights, no other pedestrians passing by at, t at this time of the night. It's dangerous, but right now, I have to. If I want to fix this, I have to get to her. Reaching the crosswalk at the end of the short a avenue is a relief. A little more, and I'll be at the station once. Uh, a little more, and I'll be at the station once I get there. Once I get to the other side of the street. My fingers fly over the keypad again, and another attempt to call her. Five seconds till the sign changes. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming into the room while we're in the middle of a tense scene. Please, answer! Four seconds. Becca's still not picking up. Three. I redial her number for the third time. Two. Please. Please, I beg of you. One. My feet are already moving. And finally, finally it connects! Help me! The world grinds to a halt. And when I look up, She's there. With the same misshapen face, tattered clothes, and unsightly gait, her voice reaches out to me again, calling like every other time, whispering, whispering, and whispering, drowning my ear with endless pleas and cries, gripping me with words I couldn't even begin to understand. There are shadows pulling at the edge of my vision and the terror her presence brings wounds 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 itself tighter on my legs this time pinning me to the ground help no enough how can i possibly help you i couldn't even help myself or the or the people i dragged into this 
She smiles, her lips contorting into something menacing. And right then and there, I understand the cutting anger in her eyes and the depth of the circumstances we find ourselves in. There's no escape. It's the last thing I see before my phone slips from my fingers and... What? What? Did we? Oh my god. Uh, can we get an F in chat for Isabella Santos? Hannah Wright Nee Evans. Birthday, April 30th. Taurus, 31 years old. She doesn't fucking look 31. Height, 5 foot 7. She's like 9 centimeters taller than me. Oh, thanks for the jingles, I dub. Nationality, British. Occupation... I don't know how to pronounce that word. Former finance manager. I'm gonna sneeze. Or not. Religion? And... Eg Anglican? 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 I don't know. Education. Masters in Business Administration. Major in Accounting. Likes... Um... Um, sure. <laughs> Dogs, fashion, parties, and dancing. The beach, children, iconic women, charity, and math. Wow. Of the Luxborn upper classes, Hannah is used to living a life of luxury. Absent parents made her crave for attention, though something she gained from her private tutors and nannies instead. It was never enough, however. She studied hard in order to make her parents proud, getting into business so that she could work alongside them. The challenge in her otherwise privileged life was certainly a thrill for her, at the very least. She had many suitors, dating different men and women, but it was through work that she met Luke. It was love at first... Uh, it was love at first sight for her. Upon her parents' death, Luke proposed to her. That was the move that led to the merging of White Wright Enterprise and Evans Incorporated and her subsequent retirement. Their seven-year marriage is strained, but Hannah tries her best to make it work. Oh, damn. Didn't realize their marriage is strained, but... Actually, yeah, he was kind of giving signs that that was the case. For a second then, I saw the chat just like do a thing. And I thought that Idub immediately just redeemed another jingle. Like, bro. <laughs> Anyways. It is far too easy to get them to pay attention and raptured. They hang on my every word and follow my every move. All of it would have been sh stifling had I not grown used to such stares, stares. Most are respectful, some are hostile if we are honest, and a few are downright inappropriate. After all, I am- Hannah Wright! Jesus Christ, bro. There's a moment of agitation as a familiar but less than welcoming face approaches me with a suggestive smirk on his face. Of course, I have to keep a benevolent smile and greet him as I greet any good friend. After all, this man can turn heads, being famous in his own right. Officer Lee! What a pleasant surprise! I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party! He's more Luke's friend than mine, really, and I am quite sure I only invited his wife. Much like I am only friends with the chief inspector because of Luke, Luke is only friends with Rochelle because of me. 
Unlike how I treat Lee, however, Luke never hid his animosity for the Lee ma matriarch. It is an odd sort of friendship where we would have awkward double dates. I don't even recall his first name. I think it started with an N. I think. It, I might be wrong. Aside from being the chief inspector of Luxborn Police, his wife Rochelle Lee Nay, I don't know, Vance owns a general electronics company. Fridges and freezers, mostly. Oh, I always have time for my favorite social art couple. Might I say, you look positively ravishing tonight. I see the husband isn't with you. Uh, bro. No. <laughs> The way his eyes meet up is enough to make my skin crawl. I just wish Luke is here to fend off the more unseemly p of my our peers. You know the ones. Men who are just a, a bit too friendly, staring too long at my assets, and getting close just because my husband is not here. And to think they have the gall to do this at my own party in my own house if I might add but like any high society woman worth her salt I know how to handle it with grace and dignity I I suppose you are looking pleasant as well Luke's busy with work unfortunately Michelle isn't here Hmm, shame. I do hope he isn't causing you much trouble. That husband of yours can be a bit tough sometimes, acting like he's still some young bachelor. The wife sends her regards and her apologies, but something came up with a doctor and she needed to attend to it. You know her being pregnant and all. We make small talk. Rather, I'm forced to do so, as he would not leave my side after finding his place there. <sighs> Much to my, uh, oh my god, chagrin, chagrin, no, what the fuck, stop giving me words, I can't fucking read. Chagrin. Alright, it is chagrin, okay, chagrin, <laughs> chagrin, chagrin, chagrin. Much to my shag. what's it even mean, hang on. Oh, it means annoyance. Ah, uh, I'm just gonna say annoyance, it's the same word. Much to my annoyance, I, uh, you know what, it doesn't even sound the same anymore. <laughs> Much to my chagrin, I've been ex extricated, extricated? Fuck my life. This is probably a really simple word that I know of, but I can't seem to fucking remember it anymore because fuck. Extricate. Extricate. So it is extricated. I've been extricated from the few who flock in hopes of flattering for I can f hopes of flattering for I can tolerate them far better than Lee. They got to make it sound all fancy like I know, right? They really do. Bro. He is a nice enough person and I adore his wife, who is obviously the brains behind the two. But there is something unsettling about him. I do not trust him as much as I want to. He regaled to me his... <laughs> he regaled to me tales of the Luxborn Police Department, a different affair to the usual gossip that I privy to, that I am privy to. And though I loathe to admit, is interesting nonetheless. I expect the topic of business to die out quickly, which would be understandable enough due to the confidential nature of his work. But, oh boy, was I wrong. So, we're in civvies, I steal and drive off with one of the police mobiles, right? In the mirror, I see the new tank chasing on foot and screaming about theft. The look on his face was priceless when I parked in the garage. Oh my... You made him chase you all the way home for a prank. What did Rochelle have to say about that? Rochelle has a strange love and hate affair with Lee. He is a married man who did not grow up past his early twenties. 
judging by the way he acts. Surprisingly enough, they've been married for a good 20 years. A lifetime if you compare it to my marriage of 7 years with Luke. I, on the other hand, well, Luke is no Lee. I should be happy about that, I suppose. Although, my darling did have his moments. Hey, the wife pulled my hair and gave me a good talking to, though. Besides, we live in a flat a block away, so it wasn't much of a grand chase. Ah, oh, this is new. Oh. What? Wait, what? What did we do? What did we do that made this, um, go down? The fuck? Was there- wait, I don't remember having a choice earlier. What the fuck? Do you guys remember there being a choice? I don't remember there being a choice earlier that would make this go down. Bitch! Didn't make it go down for no reason. Weren't you living in a house near the countryside? Move for work, you know. Or you probably don't. No, I don't. But a flat in downtown. I suppose if that's what you like. Oh, it's all right. Hate that tiny place. No matter how convenient it can be for work, 55 square yards are not enough when you need to get away from the wife. Uh, pff, what? Bitch, you insulting your wife, bro. I wouldn't mind a place away from the city. Even started looking at the ads. I spied an interesting lot, actually. Heard it was finally put up for sale. Or that something mansion, you know the one, the one with all the ghost stories. I know what he's talking about. There are really only a few urban tale legends around here. It's the Ermagood Mansion. Ah, uh, that's the one. How worthy of a king it is. I'd buy it myself, but Rochelle would only gripe if I brought it up to her. Not to mention all the expenses. A place like that would be a real fixer-upper. You also have to find someone willing to work there, with how superstitious people can be. <laughs> Hi, eyes. Welcome to the stream, babe. How you doing today? If it becomes a problem, just hire someone to do an exorcism. Actually, I do know of someone who could be up to the task. You remember the Ludgates party at their Christchurch summer residence? Of course. It was an excellent soiree. Everything was so classy, too. Such good taste. Good to hear that you're okay. <laughs> oh, that place was a pigsty until they hired out this interior designer and they turned it into a bloody palace. She worked for the Exodus for their apartment in Soho, too, and they recommended her when we were looking up pieces for our beach house in Porto Colom. I think I have a business card, right? It no, I must have left it in my other jacket. Anyway, she's called, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mikola, uh, Marianne, I believe, yes. But truly, if anyone were to get that place in Mikola, well, they'd be the envy and the talk of the town. Well, if you put it that way... I might just snatch it up for myself. How am I? I'm doing good. Just a little bit yawny today because, you know, I only woke up a few hours ago. Um, I hope it'll die down uh, in the next, like, hour or so. But um, I'm not that hopeful because um, when I'm yawny when I wake up, I tend to be yawny the whole day. Which is not great, <laughs> I'm afraid. This place was starting to feel a bit small lately anyway. Sure, a three-story penthouse might not fit the definition of small for some people. Okay, maybe a lot of people. But it isn't big enough to have grand parties in. As it is, I only invite about 30 people to this one, and it already feels cramped in here. It certainly would be nice if I didn't have to ride an elevator up and down several floors before I can get anywhere as well. All Luke's words, not mine. Besides, I have been looking for a good anniversary gift. Luke might like this one. Where is he anyway? Oh. The Return. Hannah Wright threw a, par uh, threw a party. Oh my god, I can't get out of it now. <laughs> Hannah Wright threw a party in their penthouse at the cachet? Sachet? 
the city's most powerful were seen, including Chief Inspector Harvey Lee of the Luxborn Police Department. From him, the so uh, society says, "Fuck! What the hell?" The socialite heard of the Emmengard Mansion's upcoming open house and of the interior designer Marianne McCullough. Wonderful. Luke is dressed to the nine. Uh, Luke is dressed to the nines as he usually is, and looks ready for whatever the day will throw at him. His butler and uh, valet wait at his side, just in case he isn't as ready as he looks. Oh, sure. This is normal. That is normal. What is confusing is the fact that he's on the way. <laughs> He's on his way out of the penthouse, considering we won't have anywhere to go to until much later. Where are you going? I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. Yes. And might I remind you that I had stricken that off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. I've even found this marvelous interior designer, Mary Ann McCullough. It's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this. Bro. This is like that little party you threw all over again. You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. <sighs> you know how I operate, Hana. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. If I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking, unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. <laughs> this butler is good. Bullocks. I don't remember doing so. <laughs> Bullocks. <laughs> well, you did. While very hungover, in fact. He did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave in after some pushing. Perhaps it was a bit too cruel to and manipulative of me, but... Whose side are you on? Come on, Luke. You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend. Gordon Bennett, fine. I am giving this house tour of yours a chance. But if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff, and you are going to take a cab home. Accent is hot? Well, thanks. Um, I'm glad you like it. I don't think it's gonna appear too often. I hope not, anyways. <laughs> I think it's pretty shit. <laughs> Are we clear? It's just a bit of a husband and wife tit for tat, isn't it? All couples have their arguments. Once the honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in that you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. Perhaps it has been the years. Seven of them is nothing to scoff at. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. Though sometimes I think it's something a bit more than just simple disagreements. And I have to stop myself from wondering where we went wrong. There's always the Triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Have I been neglectful? Have I offended? Have I acted shamefully? Yes, but Cardiff... Bruh! <laughs> Certainly, any problem can be discussed. As long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Are you happy now, Hana? Why must he treat me this way? Oh my god, I kind of want to defend myself because this is like, this is bullshit. Bro, this is bullshit. Why are you treating me like this? We're married for seven years? Bitch. <laughs> Should I defend myself? I ain't done. Hmm. Alright. Alright, we're doing this again. We're doing this again. We're doing this again. Silence. Err, uh, defend. Alright. You got one minute. Boom. Boom, shakalaka laka. Alright. Was that the doorbell? Ah, uh, it's only ten. Some Someone will go get it. I don't have to go downstairs and get it. It's fine. 
Why must he treat me this way? Why? Why oh why oh why oh why oh Also, I see all that wine all in the back there. Bro, bro loves his wine. He he freaking drink he fucking inhales wine. <laughs> That's how he drinks wine. He drinks it like Kirby. Kirby like when Kirby eats food. He just goes <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> A lot of wine slash alcohol. It looks like it's just wine back there. Inhale the wine, yeah. <laughs> Put it through a straw. Put a straw in like every bottle and just go. <laughs> Defend, alright. Yes, I am very happy, Luke. Because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. Oh, that went- Oh, bro, that went up? Guys, that went up. Wine is yummy? <laughs> I'm sure it is to some people. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I'm sure it is yummy to some people. Uh, also, welcome, Makoto. It's nice to see you here. I'm ecstatic. Understood. And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. We will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde Mansion. You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum. And you are going to behave during the tour. Nevertheless... Oh, fucking hell. I said nevertheless. It says needless. Needless to say, Luke looks a bit shocked at my little outburst. He opened and closed his mouth a few times, struggling to reply, before he crossed his arms and looked like... Uh, to look like, well, a moping child. Oh, you're just lurking? No, well, <laughs> it's good to see you here Any nonetheless. Any more for this little excursion of yours, your highness? No wine. No wine? Bruh, are you telling me that he's drunk all the fucking time? Unacceptable. I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure? Yeah. If I see you take one sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Bro, get that shit. Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. Oh, get that shit. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Mine. <laughs> How many times in one day can you ask that? As many times as I need you, traitor. <laughs> I like the butler. I like the butler a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bro really thought. <laughs> the ride to the mansion is quiet, with Luke having stared out the window the entire time the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Meanwhile, I am conflicted. I don't know if I should apologize for changing his plans like that, but by the time we arrive at the mansion, I see his eyes light up in genuine interest. Apologizing is the last thing on my mind. The whole affair with the Ermengarde Mansion is certainly an interesting experience. The place had been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claimed to be ex acceptable standards. The mansion itself looked like something befitting a fairy tale or a period piece. It is tastefully de decorated and, with a little bit of love and attention, I'm sure it can be a place Luke and I can call home. And the number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and wealthy of Luxbourne certainly did not disappoint, marking this estate as a prime property. The Lees are amongst the group who went with Rose, the Rose Woman, and I saw a few other notable faces, though I did not really feel like mingling. Unfortunately for every one of them, the Wrights are interested in buying. Uh, what been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel. What is her problem? I still don't quite understand what is happening. One moment she is scrambling to give us the paperwork and f to finalize the sale. Then she is panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. The second thing on my mind is how touchy my darling husband has been is being to the poor dear. 
I cannot even plaster a smile on my face. A, f a horrid scowl taking its place. There is no way I can pretend nothing is wrong as I hum. And I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her, darling. He is quick enough to dis detract his hand, with which is all the, the girl needs to, well, for the lack of a better word, escape. I, I think I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Her partner follows, shouting after her without hesitation. There is an awkward air among us as... Among us? Among us? Among us! No, I'm joking. <laughs> there is an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. The others murmured and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor daft girl and telling the tale to whoever is not was not audience to the act in the f in the first place. It doesn't take long before the woman rose to ret it doesn't take long for the woman rose to return and pull us pull us aside to the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Rose invites Marianne Rose invites Marianne in too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the woman refuses, saying she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke. The last, all too eager to make himself comfortable in the study, he is no doubt already claiming as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. Among us? Yes, among us. And it must be this terrible heat too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Oh, it's fine. The poor girl must feel so embarrassed about what she just did. But I say, let bygones be bygones. After all, she's only a child. She looked, what, 19? I shoot L Luke an accusing look at these words. After all, he tried flirting with the girl. The nerve of him. And not only that Isabel girl, but also Marianne and Rose too. What kind of husband would think that it's even a remotely good idea to make moves on three different women while his wife stands there. Did he drink while I wasn't looking? She's a bit older than that. But again, I apologize. And if there's any way I can make up for what just happened, just... I know what you can do. Be a darling flower and get us one of those bottles you plan to serve. Pop it open. We were planning on serving some champagne. I, I can get that. That would be lovely. Much obliged. Ah, bitch. Do you want a glass as well, Miss Wright? Oh, no, I'm fine. I really shouldn't be drinking right now. And Luke shouldn't, e shouldn't be either. But right now, I'm just too tired for any sort of argument. I don't have the heart to scold him in public as well. I'm certainly not his mother. I just want to get this horrid day done with and go home and sleep. You and me both, woman. Perhaps I'll even have a strong cuppa before I head off to bed. Yes, that sounds nice. When Rose comes back with the champagne, I beckoned her over. As I told her partner before, I have every intent of inquiry, un acquiring this house. I might as well, even if I have a... S even if I'm having second thoughts of getting it for Luke, the moment we, the Wrights, have expressed interest in this place, we've had eyes set on us. If we don't buy it, that might as well be a signal for to have busybodies gossip about how we may or may not have lost our fortune. Regardless of the facts, regardless of the fact that it's false, Image is 
everything when dealing with these people. These are the unspoken rules of people such as ourselves. And besides, I really did like the place. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Well, except for this ugly painting in the study. It looks like a... It looks like a bad fake of an Edward Mooch painting. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. I doubt anyone can, of course. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price, and we can sign all the paperwork now. I guess, if that's what you want. That won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne? Oh, right. She's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project forward. Please do. There is a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and masks her worries. Admirable. We have this project then? Of course. Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. A hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? The Io and behold the and lo and behold, the painting is gone. In its place, a mirror stands which leaves me to look at my own confused expression. Odd. Well, no matter. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, we are simply far too busy to meet up. That was the least horrifying thing that this game has thrown at us, if I'm frankly honest. For everything that they threw at, threw at us when we were Isabella, that was the mildest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps maybe I should um I feel like I would for me personally I probably would so I will free up my schedule what do you guys think I'm gonna free up free up my schedule free up my schedule yeah let's do that we'll free up my schedule but I guess we can free up a day to meet with you I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides my house... Uh, uh, Besides, my house has a higher priority over book club. Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place. Surely the beauty and grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and lively debates about whether modern-day writers could match up with to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off until the Ermengarde or, or rather the Wright's Mansion's grand great debut. I'll have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project at this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Breakfast, then. It's a date. It's really not. All right. Monday. Ten o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Actually, Mary Ann suggested we meet at nine, but who is even awake at that unholy hour? I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. 
We all say we say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we own this house. But by the time we left the mansion grounds, the sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Well, I'm glad you're not complaining like you usually do. It's a right and proper Christmas miracle, isn't it? Hana has finally done something right. I refuse to look at him, staring at the passing scenery instead. Hey, Buttercup, what's with this cheek? Rose, Lily, Mint, the nerve, Luke, the nerve! Is that what this is about? One, that woman's name was Rose, and two, you know I don't mean a word of that empty flirting. And it's still the principle of things, Luke. I understand if you try to woo them to get what you want when it seems that I'm not looking, but I told you once before not to do it when I'm there. Luke dealt with other women in the past to get what he wanted. Sometimes I have my doubts. I really want to believe that I'm an exception, that he is not just using me like he, like how he uses those other girls. I am having a hard time believing that now. And it isn't just the shameless flirting, the shameless flirting. There's something about that Mary Ann woman, as if Luke is familiar with her. As much as it shames me, it makes jealousy rear its ugly head. I am, suffice to say, ticked off. Really? I forfeit my trip to Cardiff for this, and you're still not happy. Oh, trust me, Luke. I am very happy. Very happy that, for once, we are doing something that I want. Can you not see the smile on my face? It is only when I let loose those words that the, tru the truth hits me like a slap in the face. And by the looks of it, it seems to have the same effect on my dear darling husband. It, it has always been Luke wants to do this and Luke wants to do that, hasn't it? I don't even remember the last trip we went on which was my own, which was of my own choosing without needing to get the man's approval. On the other hand, I was pulling along to... Uh, on the other hand, I was pulled along to every single expedition he wished to tackle and I never objected. The rest of the ride home is spent ignoring each other, pretending the other doesn't, doesn't exist. <laughs> Sorry, I fumbled over my lines just then. My lines? I fumbled over the words. Goddamn. <laughs> Arriving at our penthouse, my first order of business is to go into bed. Forgetting a hot, Forget a hot bath and forget the tea. I just want to bury myself in blankets and forget everything in my slumber. It seems that Luke has the same idea in mind as he tags along behind me. But this is something I will not allow the moment I pass through the door. Out. What the bloody hell, woman? This is my bedroom too! <laughs> the way he said that, bro! Luke stands flabbergasted as I deny him entry into our chambers. His pillow lie on the cold, tiled floors away from the warmth of our soft bed down bed, and my gaze promises him the same fate if he does not budge on the matter. Don't even try to argue, because I am very cross with you, Luke Wright. You can take the second bedroom or the guest room if you wish, but I do not want to see you at all for the rest of the night. Johans! Our butler wanders over, a curious expression on his face. He doesn't quite hurry, moving at a relaxed pace no matter how angry his master sounded. No, you are not allowed to sleep in my room, sir. That's not what I mean! Help me talk some sense into her! <laughs> what the hell? I love his immediate reaction is, you're not sleeping in my room, bro. No way. <laughs> there is no sense in questioning her right to be angry, sir. So, if I might be excused, I'll go prepare the second bedroom for you. Thank you, Johans. I love this butler too. I have fucking hell. Yes. I have to keep a straight face as he stomps away defeated. Mutiny. This is mutiny. <laughs> the 
this guy. The system is being upturned, and the people are rioting, and everything is left asunder. Bro, what the hell? These lines. Oh my god. <laughs> it isn't every day that Luke is rendered speechless by someone he considers inferior, or to yield to another authority without an ulterior motive. His pride just won't allow it. I do keep telling the man to treat his people better. He may throw whatever he, whatever fit he wants, but he will not be getting his way tonight. Victoriously, I celebrate by jumping face first into our bed. Undignified, yes, but nobody's here to judge me anyway. Right? Nobody is here to tell me what to do. Yet, as I succumb to sleep... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hang on. Yet, as I succumb to sleep, I can hear them whisper to me. I can hear them whisper. Uh, I hate basements. I hate cellars. No, 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 no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, I fucking hate that. Calling for me. They want me. Need me. They drowned me, pulled me down, and suffocate me in their embrace until I sink to the bottom. A deep abyss awaits, inviting yet foreboding. They're calling to me from in there, aren't they? And I do want to help, I do. But when I try to reach out, something pulls me back. Like a hook sinking itself into my stomach. Okay, that's that's okay. That actually made me jump a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit, not too much. I don't like cellars. I think I've mentioned this before. I don't like cellars. I don't like basements. If I buy a house and there is a basement, I'm selling it immediately. I don't want a basement or a cellar. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I break through the surface with a gra with a gasp. Alone in bed and without Luke to hulk the covers, I swat at the is I sw I swath I am swathed in cloth and s slicked with sil slicked with set sweat <laughs> words swath and slicked right I am swathed in cloth and slicked with sweat. It takes me a while to untangle myself and kick them all off. Both the bed and I were our right mess by the end of all of it. But I am more than eager to just get up and go out for some fresh air. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. Boop. Ah, here it is. During the open house, Hannah pressured the estate agents to sell her the mansion. The Wrights also met their interior designer, but displeased with her husband's flirtatious attitude, a disagreement brewed be during the ride home. Inevi inevitably, they ended up sleeping in different bedrooms that night. Wonderful. I love the butler. I fucking love the butler. The days past had gone by a blur. By a blur. We hadn't talked much, Luke and I, outside of necessity. In fact, we've hardly talked beyond the topic of acquaint uh, ac acquisitions of properties. Properties being the mansion, obviously. Everything has been so busy and that I haven't talked to anyone outside of business. And it's, it is just so stressful. So, one can understand my need for a good chat, preferably over a good meal. There are times when any decent, emotional, healthy, and social, co uh, socially capable person needs a good friend. One who will talk to them, talk to them without a, the conversation degrading or turning into an argument. Or bearing a barring, barring? Barring a nearby friend, I have an interior designer under a confidentiality agreement to listen to me. Up higher, come on now. 
The place is bustling with the movers carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. I can hear Luke barking at them in the other room, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Jesus Christ, damn Luke demanding or what? Anyways. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you not make. Oh my god, calm the fuck down. God, I'm hot. I know I'm hot. Keep telling me that. <laughs> It is hard to tune him out. The walls did no did not do a good job of muffling him at all. But then again, it is Luke. Thanks for the hydrate, um, Ida. Yes, the sounds were necessary. I would still hear him ranting even if we were on the opposite side of the mansion and I were I'm wearing earplugs. Need water for this thirsty hell, yeah. Hang on, let me read that again, because I feel like I read it hot. <laughs> I read it so bad. I would still hear him ranting, even if we were on the opposite sides of the mansion, and I'm wearing earplugs. I'd really like to thank you for inviting me to breakfast, Mrs. Wright, but I already ate, so I should really go back to work. Nonsense! You arrived so early, you must not have gotten a proper meal. Our butler has made a surprisingly lovely bubble and squeak. Sit, sit. I'd situate us in the dining hall, but it is a mess right now. Oh, Johans! The man in question appears, ready with a tray, as he starts to set the table for us. We sit in silence as we are each served our a plate. Bubble and squeak, topped with, topped by a nicely poached egg with cherry tomatoes and other garnishes adorning the edges of the plate. It looks so fucking good, bro. <laughs> Anyone else want this? I want to try this. This looks good. A cup and saucer, uh, uh, a cup and saucer with, and a teapot with some Earl Grey is placed down for Marianne and I asked for an orange Julius. How are you liking the project? Drop that bars and I'll have your head. Oh my fucking god, calm the fuck down. I know it's only an eight million yen bars, but I swear i Well, it's certainly a fun challenge. Incorporating the designs of a Jacobean manor and the functionality of a modern household. I have ideas I would like to suggest, by the way, about what to use the second bedroom for. I have been informed of your goddaughter and thought a kid-friendly room might be in order. You read my mind. I was actually going to bring that up. Oh, that would just be so lovely, Marianne. That way, Kylie can bring her friends over as well. And a good friend of mine, Brochelle, is expecting a baby. So, why don't we think about putting a crib in there, too? I can just imagine little ones running around, filling this place with the pitta-patta of their feet. We'd have to make sure they don't trip and fall on the stairs, though. We won't be able to finish everything up until after the party. But we'll have it ready by then, so that all we need to do is to move in the furnishings. Yes, that's plenty fine. It's not like we're in a hurry to have it. And we wouldn't want the workers to disturb the guests or the other way around, do we? Just make sure it's presentable. You know, in case a guest snoops about. Of course. As for the kitchen you wanted, I've already negotiated for the high-end stoves and the hot and cold drawers, so on and so forth. I've got a friend who was able to customize them so that they'll look like the counters we'll be replacing and fit the rest of the interior. They'll be bringing them in today. Why can't you people do anything right? Don't drag it. You'll scratch the wood. <laughs> oh my god, Luke. <laughs> Get the fuck. Excellent. But no, really, how have you liked it so far? Oh, it has been wonderful, believe me. Everything is going smoothly, too. It has been a long time since I've worked on something in this grand a scale. Nowadays, everyone is about condos and flats. Living in the city where every room is an identical box. Oh my god, I fucking hated that. I used to live in an apartment. Um, technically, I've lived in a condo when I was back in, when I was back in Malaysia. Um, and then we had 
two different apartments when we were in China, and they were both like they both looked the same, albeit the second apartment was just a bit bigger. And uh, I can sort of understand it, because when I moved over, when we moved over here to the UK, uh, we've had houses as opposed to um, apartments or condos, and um, it's just a bit more refreshing to have like more space <laughs> and go upstairs where it's not someone else's house and it's yours. It's it's nice. It's nice. Believe me, this is very refreshing. We lived in a condo before this, Marianne. Uh, I didn't mean any insult. I. It's fine, sweetie. Look at you, all frazzled. I was just pulling your leg. Luke wanted that penthouse when we got married, and you can thank him for purchasing this place as well. She looked confused. Of course, she has every right to be. She, no doubt, overhear overheard me pushing that estate agent into the sale, making quite the aggressive offer. She saw me sign the papers for the mansion as well. I just had to scoff. Don't be fooled. I'm just the treasury. I wouldn't be able to make a purchase this grand without his seal of approval. I see. That's it. That's all you have to say. Yes. It wouldn't be appropriate to comment further. It is unprofessional. Unprofessional? I can't help but let a deep sigh let out a deep sigh as I stick the fork into the dish. I didn't want professional. I wanted someone who will either agree with me, even if it's just for the sake of agreeing, uh, or someone who will just try to talk some sense into me. Neutral responses are so boring. There is no discourse in the middle ground. The food is good. Best bubble and squeak. Of course it is. Our kitchen staff only uses the freshest hand-picked ingredients. Only the best for the rights. Mr. Wright is not joining us? No. He is far too busy bossing people around. He even refused to join me for breakfast earlier. Hence, this. I see. My apologies. I really don't know what sort of response you expect to get from me. There is a clatter of silverware as I slap my hand on the table. It is frustrating. I'm frustrated. At Luke, mostly. But Marianne's neutral, professional answers are certainly irksome as well. You're a human with feelings and opinions, aren't you? Don't give me this bollocks about being professional when we're having a nice, friendly chat over a nice and friendly breakfast. I can only talk about interior designs for so long, and I detest one-sided conversations, Marianne. But I really don't know what to say, Mrs. Wright. We were talking of no topic in particular, and... Luke. We were talking about Luke. About him not eating breakfast with you? About him treating me as if I were some treasury! I didn't realize that I shouted out loud until it was too late. There is a stunned silence that settled before I slumped back into my seat. Hiding my face behind my hands, I can feel my shoulders shake. Breathe, I told myself. Calm down. But it is just so hard. Honestly, sometimes I feel like he doesn't love me anymore. Oh, have I been so blind? Did he ever love me at all? Was our marriage all for the sake of saving his company and his wealth? Because... Because? Did I say all that out loud again? No, this is bad. Unacceptable. Why did I say unacceptable like that? What the fuck? <laughs> it has been rumoured before. The real reason for our engagement. But if anyone were to know of this... Marriages of necess 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 fuck marriages of necessity to carry on political and financial power used to be a common thing, but the Evan Wright Union, the Evans Wright Union, is a perfectly hap happily is the perfect happily ever after was supposed to be. It is true that we first met each other. Do in order to discuss dealings, but to make... Oh, what the fuck? 
It is true that we first met each other in order to discuss dealings to make the, den, the then failing Wright Enterprise a subsidiary of Evan Incorporated, but I do remember being in love with him, and there are many times that he said he loved me back. But I'm not sure of what the truth is now. Either way, I don't want the right name or the Evans name to be dragged through the mud because of a slip-up. What? And if Mary Ann so much as talked of this... I'm gonna ask for her silence. I'm not gonna threaten her. That's a bit in... Oh, okay. Wonderful. Mary Ann is a good sort, isn't she? So far, she has been reasonable and accommodating, even towards Luke's ridiculous requests. Patient and professional. Did it only extend to business? Or would she be able to understand the things like this? That things like this are not as simple, not as clean, as they are painted to be. Certainly I can talk to her. Ask her. I won't speak a word, Mrs. Wright. Not only am I contractually obliged to, it would also go against my principles. This is no one else's business but your own, and it should be kept between the two of you. And whoever you wish to seek counsel from. Please, Marianne. You have to understand these sort of affairs. If anyone were to know this, they could just twist it and we'll be ruined. All I ask for is your silence on the matter. If I am to be frank, Mrs. Wright, this isn't new for me. You aren't the first, and you certainly won't be the last to have complicated dealings. Unless what you're doing is illegal, I turn a blind eye. Can I trust her? <laughs> if I wasn't in the same boat, I'd be trying to pry those secrets and gossip with you about them by now. Well, I'm keeping that information confidential as well. <laughs> it's not like I have any other choice, do I? Thank you. We continue to eat our meal in peace, finishing the last of the food and drink. When the door opens to the parlour, Marianne and I are just sitting in silence. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. I give him nothing but a small nod. This was a wonderful meal, Marianne. You're free to return to your duties. I must excuse myself. It was my pleasure, and thank you for the food as well. Making my way downstairs, I look back and see Marianne give me a small nod and a, sm a small smile. That certainly put me in a lighter spirits. Put me in lighter spirits, not in lighter spirits. What the fuck? Ahem. <clears throat> the right couple moved to their newly bought mansion today and was already preparing for a housewarming party. Hannah and Marianne were seen having breakfast together, with, a former complain with the former complaining and accidentally divulging too much details about her marital problems. Problems, 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 problems. Yeah, I can speak. Uh, uh, an interview with Luxury Living. T that is today, isn't it? Oh, yes. People have caught wind of our new mansion the very moment we left the open house. Luke had boasted he could acquire the property in no time and allowed the photo shoot to, for the interior design magazine be to be scheduled today. Well, there were complications and it took no longer than it usually does for us. Hopefully, I won't have any other unfortunate slip-ups with someone who isn't bound by confidentiality. The mansion grounds has been one of the first things to be fixed up aside from the bedroom. Although it's still it's still a working progress. It had a promising start and I can already see the flower patches. Luke's favorite favorite daffodils stand out easily. You raid my tomb? Damn, I'm not even dead yet, what the fuck? Alright, uh, if you can find it. Uh... Yawns, excuse me. <clears throat> Luke's favored daffodils stand out easily. 
have been trans having tra having oh my god having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter the rooftops of our penthouse why if the moving crew thought that luke was being hard on them they clearly didn't see the landscaper on his way out the man looked like he was ready to faint and luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of their discussion it is in the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers in quiet admiration. He is hard to miss. The hulk of a man that clearly did not belong and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him look much larger. It is a particular sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling little delicate things with such care. He looks up from the gardens and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. Hope you weren't waiting too long. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. The one and only. Welcome, welcome to Maison de Wright. And yes, we've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed. But it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. Hana, if I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Alrighty then. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Rat Hana. <laughs> Zachary proves quickly enough that I that I can in fact trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in this industry at the very least. I made that. I built up that sentence thinking it would go somewhere. <laughs> Damn. Ah! Uh! Camera splashing. He is kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow, and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with them. I answer his questions to the best of my abilities, and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one, I asked what the bags are there f um for one, I asked what the bags are for. They are quite they are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had a procured from from inside, he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Bowls of fruit, lemons, trays of pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards, and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are brought in for a kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, white towels, she's seashells, and decorative soaps. There are there are other things as well, too numerous to count. All in that large backpack and suitcase. Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights. Don't tell me all of these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Oh, it better. We go through the rooms one at a time, although we first tackled the ones that the movers have no business in anymore. The ballroom needs little preparation with its grand design. Although there are some troubles at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's props come in handy, considering how 
Johans has kept the place so neat and sterile, one can practically eat off the floor. We carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with exception of the rooms which they have yet to gain proper dis uh, gain any purpose or design. Too bad, I can't take a sneak peek at his photos yet. Funnily enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft uh, about his craft that I not I'm not too worried about botched photographs. I imagine photo I imagine photography must be cathartic for him, judging by the by how at ease he looks when he take he's while taking pictures. I, if I can read, that would be great. Is today just not a good day for me to be reading? Oh my god. Hang on. I need to... I need to... I need to stop yachting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven people here. Okay. There are small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of, cam of the camera. He even goes so far as to talk about these t terminologies like s fuck I can't read about these terminologies like shutter speeds and aper aperture 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 I don't know aperture ap whoa, whoa what the fuck is this word oh 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 aperture yeah, aperture. Like shutter speeds and aperture when I asked about the technical aspects. I can't quite see the picture as it is made, much like when I watch artists paint on their canvases. But just watching someone passionately practicing their craft such as this is exciting in its own way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the exercise for the both of us. Despite that, he is he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. But it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer 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 that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. And had I not been paying attention, I wouldn't have even noticed. It is merely a split second that Zachary ri Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. A f his finger didn't move to release the shutter. Yet he does not pull the camera away from his face. Gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shaking, and there is light, a light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary? No response. Zach, is something the matter? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Turning around, turning around though, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? I struggled to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness on my th around my throat. Everything stops and everything starts again as I manage to choke out. If you're sure... I don't know what just happened. It... It was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there is an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. So, is this a full-time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly. For magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but 
It's not what I really want to do. At least, not all the time. What is it that you want to do then? Maybe I've been out of line sticking my nose into other people's business, but I can't help but ask. I regret doing so as I see his shoulders slump and the easygoing air he has fade away. He looks torn whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films. Documentaries mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fonsi very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Very funny. So, Grand Director, do you want to tell me what Blue Fonsi is all about? He hesitates. But when I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in and spills it all out. Blue Foncier. The whole, oh, I can't fucking read that. Let's not even try. Dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. He speaks with passion of one who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge, and experience in his speech. Why, I would have told him that he was an amazing speaker, and only I wasn't if only I wasn't so engrossed in listening. Prejudice and discrimination in schools and in the workplace. Lesser chances or opportunity and higher chances of being treated like a criminal. He speaks of blacks and people of colour in general, still being treated like second class citizens. All because of the colour of their skin. It is all just positively riveting and sad. It comes to the point wherein he soon stops, he soon loses steam. He looks abashed, realizing what he has just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away and... It's fine. It is really so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion after all. You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. You do have very beautiful eyes. Uh-huh. Thanks, I guess. I, I want to say that I understand where he's coming from, but I really don't, do I? I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I've lived a charmed life. I haven't been perfect, but... The difficulties I've been through pales in comparison to what others experience on a daily basis. I certainly don't know how I would have fared were it any different. I... Would I still have met Luke? And would he still love me if I was any lesser? What was your home like? These things you talk about. It sounds like you... Well, I don't mean to pry, I mean. Hmm? Live with my older sister and my grandparents. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our palm... Sorry, flat. And well, I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around. But a pencil and notebook would go missing, you know? Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel sometimes. Of course, it may be significant a slightly different story when you have personal guards and then st and the stolen items are not pencils but an expensive heirloom so what about you are you liking your new house it's pretty impressive it's nice i suppose you suppose not big enough what no oh don't be a bully it's just that i understand if you don't want to talk about it I was a little girl, all dolled up and treated like fragile porcelain, and nursemaids waiting to to me, waiting to me hand and foot. All the material possessions anyone could ever want, I could ask for on a whim, and it would be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents. Just goodbye kisses in the morning before they were off. Before they went off to who knows where, they were needed to next. 
I saw them more often on the telly and I saw them more often on the telly or in the papers than I do ever did in person. I remember my old house. It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big halls, but nobody in it. Not really. It makes you think how alone you are. A pensive mood overcomes us, and there's a moment where neither of us are sure how to go on from there. Things have gotten a little too personal. Yet it isn't wholly uncomfortable. Like as if we've been friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. You'll make home out of it yet. He certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood hi uh, my childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Just as large and as extravagant. And just as empty. I hope he's right. So, Monsieur Le Photograph, you've covered the one and only Ermengarde Mansion. What's next on the agenda? The interview? Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. And they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. Honor Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah, blah. Boring. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. Blue Fonsi, The Darkest Hours of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. Those are the things that people should know about. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? People, right? We. Oui. People are shite. <laughs> I love that. I love that. People are shite. <laughs> what do you think? Do I look good with this angle? I strike a pose while he was... I strike a pose while he's being busy, looking taken aback for a moment, probably not expecting me to just go and say such a crass word. But he recovers quickly, and after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah, vous êtes belle. You want copies of these ones? Yes, please. So, the big boy knows French. You must have wooed a few ladies. Unless you're into gents. Either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. <laughs> Adina, <laughs> come speak French to me. No, oh, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry, but I've made lunch for a girl before, and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Can you cook all your best? I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. C'est magnifique. It has been too long since I had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Leah is certainly not a good friend. And although we've just met, Zachary is the sort who can probably befriend anyone. He's just a comfortable person to be around. Uh, to be around with. A bit too comfortable. The photo shoot went by a breeze. And somewhere along the way, as we talked and laughed, I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me a, he'll give me this strange look until I back off, and he'll go back to asking questions after I agree to do his little interview. And it's just odd. Well, no, me being, me being friendly isn't odd. That is how I am, Zach. Zachary is the one that's being odd. Why? Anyone else would absolutely welcome the extra attention I give them. He, on the other hand, looks almost flustered about it. He should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind, but he is a big boy. He should be he should be able to handle me. All it was all it is is a friendly touch here and a pretty smile there, and the gentle swaying of the hips as I move around. Zachary grew and grew more red every time he noticed. Am I being mean if I find enjoyment of seeing him unravel? Perhaps. 
This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the outside view. At least, that's how I see it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Could you maybe stop doing that? Stop? I'm not sure what I want to do, though. I'm not sure if I want to, though. I think I'll stop, because we already reprimanded Luke for flirting. I feel like we shouldn't really be flirting either. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna say right here that we're halting these actions. I'm... Uh, mm, I do not condone... Um... Flirting. <laughs> Unless it's just for fun. I know she's teasing. But at the same time, I kind of... I don't know. This kind of irks me a little bit. So I'm gonna stop it right here. I'll stop if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. Sorry. No, I should be the one apologizing. Why, you're a shy one, aren't you, big guy? Uh, it's not that, but... He gestures to the ring on my finger and lets the fact of the matter hang heavily between us. Being told implicitly that I am too forward is not a common occurrence. I think I'm more stunned at the fact that he pointed it out rather than, well, being rejected. Not that anything is going to happen between us in the first place. It... It was just going to be some harmless flirting. Right? So, you've never had a girlfriend? No. No boyfriend either. You know, just in case you were gonna ask for that one next. And you haven't even had your first kiss? Not a one, ma'am. Do you want to have your first kiss today? I can't help it. I really, really can't, and I'm going to apologize lots later. Surely, by the cha by the catty smile on my face, it is obvious that I'm just pulling his leg. <laughs> the laugh I fail to contain certainly gives it away, if it still isn't obvious. But still, he lightens up in embarrassment, and but still, he lights up in embarrassment, stammering and stuttering objections. You're married, and, and this will be extremely unprofessional. I never said I would kiss you, silly. Oh, you Hans. No, what? No, no. D don't call your butler. She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's uh. Okay, it's kind of funny. That would be for the better. I don't think his husband would appreciate it if I made him kiss another man. I do not think he can hear us from here either. But it is hard to think you're not taken, Zachary. Why, whoever becomes your girlfriend will be so lucky to have you. You can cook and take wonderful photographs. Yeah, uh, this woman. Oh, I cannot. Wonderful meals and wonderful memories. I could play guitar too. You can? Oh my. Wonderful serenades as well then. Perhaps I can find a young lady who deserves a fine, strapping young gentleman like yourself. Let's not get carried away. Besides, I gotta be going. It's getting late and I got someplace else to be. A shame. I will be expecting you again soon, I hope. For a copy of my photographs, yes? Of course. I'll even deliver them personally. Just, you know, don't try to make me kiss your butler when I drop by. <laughs> As fate would have it, the moment the words leave his mouth, Johans comes out of the house. Judging by the slight raise in of his brow, he has heard only the tail end of the sentence. There shall be no kissing of any butlers under this roof, Danke. <laughs> but you are not under a roof, are you, Hansi? To my amusement, he takes a spe- <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Wait! To my amusement, he takes a step back, safely placing himself within the threshold of the foyer and under a roof under the roof of the house. And just as ever, he is quick to return a sardonic reply. I am now. As I was saying, madam, it's about time for supper. I love this butler, bro. I love him. He's so fucking hilarious. I love him. Will I be needing to set an extra place at the table? Oh, what? No, I was just leaving, actually. So, you have a good night, Hana. And you too, Hansy. It was nice to meet you, Zach, honey. You have a safe trip. He is my favorite, too. I don't want this guy to die. I like him too much. 
he nods and the grin on his face he nods and the grin on his face as we say goodbye our goodbyes is the sweetest that I have ever seen I linger looking out for him with his relatively tiny bicycle backpack safely secured on the uh, in the basket by the front the suitcase hooked to the back I watched as he went down the path back to Amsel village Amslin village until he was nothing more than a blip in the horizon I cannot help the small smile on my face as I go inside for supper damn imagine being sexy gosh Hannah meant Zachary Steele, a freelance photographer for from Lux Luxury Living, an interior design magazine. Zachary has uh, Zachary was tasked to interview Hannah and to take pictures of the mansion and its new owners. What should have been a professional meeting ended up being a fr being friendly and perhaps too personal. Also, thanks for the compliment, comrade. Much appreciated. Entering the dining hall causes me so much confusion. It is dark. For a moment, I thought the electricity wasn't... Uh, excuse me. That came out of nowhere. For a moment, I thought the electricity work isn't... is not up to par. But that clearly is not the case, as every other room is bright and with artificial light. Finding the light switch on the monument is a monumental task, considering the size and my unfamiliarity of the room. To make matters worse, the darkness grants the room a different atmosphere. Eerie and frightening. It takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will be that that will have to be rectified later on my skin starts to prickle and there is a distinct feeling of being watched it unsettles me and only spurs me on uh, only spurs me on in my search and when i do open the lights there is a hiss i'll turn the lights down woman there, at the end of the hall, is my beloved husband, with his face in one hand and a glass in the other. Other, Perhaps I can let it go if there's only one glass of wine. Why is it green? However, I can feel myself go livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? You know what the doctor said. Absent Luke, are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car. Honeybee, buttercup, not too loud, please. Besides, it's Lelouch, not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Helps with the hangover, dearest. You drank? When? This morning, love. Don't be mad. I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. And maybe I had one too much. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. I had to attend the photo shoot and interview with Luxury Living. You know that. Uh, let's not make this about me, Luke. This is about you and your drinking problem and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? He dares! If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey. I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? What's it going to be? Should I tell the truth or tell a little lie? Bro, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Ah! Uh... Um, but it do 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 do. There you go. But this man has the gall. He has the gall to accuse me 
of anything. This man who flirted with three separate women the the on the day of the open house. What the fuck? This man has the goal. I'm gonna eat a mango. I thought for a second I accidentally hit the button to stop streaming. Oh my god, that would have been horrifyingly bad. Hmm. Mango. Oh, it's a little sour. But it's okay. Mango's all the same. Ah! A true story line. Do we tell them I was with Zach or that I was tending to the gardens? Johans will probably side with me, but, um. Still. Uh, I guess we're telling them we're in the garden. I was just tending to the garden, sweetie. You were? For a moment, he looks skeptical. I tell him by... Th I can tell by the gleam in his eye. And the way he sits up in attention. He thinks I'm lying. But I see no point in bringing up Zachary and aggravating him. I did tend to the gardens for a bit. So it's not a complete lie. Just a little white lie. Besides, I know just how to please him. Sauntering over and circling around, uh, circling around him, I place a finger on his shoulder. He lets out a little groan before melting like butter as I massage his so shoulders. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I had to make sure they didn't ruin your favorite daffodils. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm not sure if he means the massage or the flowers, but I'll take it. This is better than a fight. So, absent. Just one glass, mm, Lush. Uh, I suppose I can let this one go. A bit too late anyway, you've already drank half the thing. But remember your doctor's orders. Yes, yes, I'll try to drink less. Try. Hey, I'm only human. Do you want one? No, thank you. A supper is spent in silence with nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served, well, grander than usual anyway, most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. A platter of native oysters for starter and trenched trench of turbot with purple sprouting broccoli, lemon capers and anchovy sauce for mains. That looks really good, actually. I wonder what's for dessert. <gasps> to finish it all off, black tea and golden spirit sponge pudding with custard. Oh my god, I want the dessert, bro! Can I get- can I hire a Johans of my own, please? Oh my fucking god. But when our appetites are appeased and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight, and leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Lonely, in the lull of night, I sit. I sit in a house too big and too empty, foreign and unwelcoming. Why do I say unwelcoming like that? What the fuck? Even with its warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. There is no need for tears, however, I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I faced before. This is a minor setback in what I hope will be a long and happy life. To remind myself of that, this place is for Luke, and for our future children fills me with the with a renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is having a cry already. A wailing is far away and muffled. Yet at the same time, it shakes me to my very core as I hear it. As if the, s the suffering is just standing right beside me. Hearing this sh sends chills down my spine and makes my skin prickle with goosebumps. Who is that? 
curiosity sinks in as I follow the sour sorrowful sound into the kitchen. Why would you follow the sound, bro? Ahem. <clears throat> During supper, Hannah found Luke drinking absinthe, and this caused an argument. While Hannah was not angered by her husband's drinking problem, Luke was surprised, of suspicious of his wife's activities, having not seen her the whole afternoon despite finishing Luxury Living's interview early. Then there was this crying woman. I already read this, right? I'll read it again. Curiosity sinks in as I follow the sorrowful sound into the kitchen and into the wine cellar hatch. Hello? Is anybody down there? I'm curious and concerned, but there is no way I'm going down into the dark and humid underground. I'm not as enthusiastic as Luke, who considers himself quite the connoisseur. However... I also cannot bring myself to go to bed with this racket going on. If it is one of the household's help, they surely need some talking. They will surely need some talking. After all, this wouldn't be the first time I've gone and found out... found one of the maids sobbing their eyes out over one thing or another. As professional as our staff are, they're still human. More often than not, it was either Johans or I who'd calm them down, who'd help them figure out how to go on about things. Unfortunately, I'm not in high spirits right now, so I'm not as wholly benevolent. So I will... Ugh, oh my god, I know I'm gonna... Oh, fucking hell. Okay, 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 okay. <sighs> Uh, open the hatch? Nah, you guys are gonna have to vote that bitch. Man, last time I did this and you guys made me look up, bro, that woman was fucking horrifying. But we'll see, we'll see. We'll have a minute to vote. You guys got plenty of time. You have plenty of time. She's just constantly crying. I actually had to lower the volume so that I could actually think and read. Alright, let's see, let's see. Oh my god, you guys want to fucking kill me. Alright. I may not be going down, but there's no point in talking through closed doors. Or hatches, in any case. In this case. The thing refused to budge at first until a soft click, and it easily swings free. As I lift the hatch and look down into the cellar, a sense of uneasy washes over me. Uh, oh, fuck. A sense of uneasiness washes over me. It isn't just a sudden onset of, vit vit of vertigo or and nausea, but also the darkness. It's suffocating. And as I look down, it feels like it's looking back at me. I worry that something will suddenly pull me into the depth. I can hear her whispering. Calling for me. She wants me. Needs me. She wants to drown me, pull me down, and suffocate me in her embrace until I sink to the bottom. A deep abyss waits, inviting yet foreboding. She's calling for me from in there, isn't she? And I do want to help. I do. But the shadows threaten to creep out and a feeling of apprehension keeps me in place. Already, it paints the room in a darker light. 
It's just like the dream all over again. There is a hook in my stomach as well. But this time, it doesn't pull me back. Instead, it pulls me forward. There is a lurching sensation, and the feeling that follows after is hard to explain. It feels like I'm watching myself from the sidelines, a spectator of my actions, or lack thereof. I will... I'll... I will myself to snap out of this detached feeling, to move, to do anything except to s at stare at myself. And for a moment, I look at the fear in my own face. I'm back in my body, but the hook is in my... St but the hook in my stomach is no longer the only one. There are hooks everywhere, tearing and pulling at my skin, flesh and bones. They're pulling at me in every direction and it hurts. It hurts so much, but I just can't bring myself to scream out. Help me. Fuck. Oh, fuck, I skipped it. No, I didn't mean to skip it. I want to go back. I didn't even save. Alright, alright, alright. Now we're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're going to skip this. Alright, we're going to skip this. Skip. Uh, stay at home. Skip all this. Meet with her. Skip this. Isabella dies. Ben -da -da. And then we're Hannah. Skipping. Damn. This feature is so helpful. Defend yes. myself. Uh, free up my schedule. Not. Trying to remember which ones I picked. I didn't mean to hit tab. It said hit tab. Um, uh, ask for her silence. Doop. Oh, excuse me. Oh my god. Alright, alright, alright. We are almost there. We are almost there. We are almost there. Can we just thank the lords for this feature, by the way? Stop it. I'll stop the... Uh, I was tending I was to the garden. Ah, here we go, here we go. Okay, 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 okay. Boop. The weeping. Right, 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 right. Okay, 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 okay. What is this game? This game is called The Letter. It is a horror, uh, visual, uh, visual novel game. Oh, shit. Um, it's an indie horror game. Over, th over the hatch. Uh, skip, 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 skip. Skip this. Because we already read all this. I accidentally skipped the... A... Yeah, don't worry. I have dyslexia too, but I'm t I'm trying to like read things out loud because I'm I am a voice actor, so I have to, you know, practice. What's the button? What's the button? What's the button? Up here, bitch! What's the button? Oh, S S S! Holy shit! Okay, 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 okay. Ah! Bitch ass motherfucker. J. Ah! I wake from a deep slumber. It takes a while with the fog that has settled in my head, and with my heavy limbs. But soon, I manage to look around. I'm in our bedroom already, although I don't recall going here. Luke slumbers beside me, looking peaceful and angelic. It doesn't matter. I'm safe, and I feel better than ever. Tomorrow, better days will come. Alright, good night, comrade. I hope you have a nice rest, and I hope this didn't scare you too much that you will have nightmares. Do rest well and have sweet dreams.
But don't worry about reading it, Rohan. I will be reading the entire thing, although I will be messing up on occasion. Luke is already gone by the time I rise. There isn't a single hide nor hair of him to be found, and trying to call him on his mobile is a bust, as it only goes straight to his voicemail. That's twice in a row he's gone on me. And for him to disappear today of all days is every bit upsetting because of what's to come. The morning is once again filled with a whirlwind of activities. Fortunately, I am much more refreshed as we... Well, I took a break from my responsibilities. I haven't the faintest clue where Luke was yesterday. Today is going to be a busy day, although unlike Wednesday, the master of the house isn't here right now. Absent once again for from his duties. Ah, uh, that's fine, that's fine. I, I kind of uh, I kind of mess up with reading a lot, uh, especially when I'm reading out loud, so bear with me. Hopefully, he'll be back in time for the party. This is our house, after all. A grand housewarming party is... A grand housewarming party for the wonderful Wright Mansion. Every person of importance from Luxburn is invited, and there will be a few guests flying in as well. Of course, there will be be some people from the media, along with friends and acquaintances who are made no less important, regardless of their status in society. Marianne and I discuss business and last-minute touches to the house before finalizing everything. Not, our, not that there is much change from our original plans. Bar any Bar any huge additions to this property itself, the mansion is nearly a hundred percent complete. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous, and in such a short time, too. Well, I can't take all the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the right mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Luke and I had a small tiff about making the second bedroom a child's playroom, which I insisted is completely practical. In the end, he had acquis acqui In the end, he had to acquisit. Uh, fuck this word, bro, bro. Uh. Acquiesced. Acquiesce. Ah, uh, yeah, it's acquiesced. Alright. He had to acquiesce. I, did, I didn't give him any choice on the matter. He even brought this wonderful wooden crib. I even bought this wonderful wooden crib from an antique store yesterday, including some toys. Just in case anyone brings their baby, of course. Besides... We have little need for actual guest rooms. We hardly have guests who spend the night. If we absolutely have to, we often choose to foot the bill for their visit uh, on one of their hotels, on one of our hotels instead. Always at Luke's own insistence. And on top of... And... Uh, and... On the off chance that we actually let someone stay, the bedroom in the opposite wing is still up to the task. Oh no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. No, I did not agree to him having a helipad. All right then. Well, do we have any other concerns? Anything we need to put on our agenda before the party commences? Oh, I need to hydrate. Man. No, I don't think so. Not unless Luke has anything else to say. Is he around then? It'd be best if we can note down his request right away considering the scope of his usual ones. Around? No. 
where is he? Who knows where? I don't. No, he's not around. She didn't have to point out the obvious now, did she? After seven long years, I've gotten used to him. I should be by now. Still not, apparently. But don't you have a party? I want nothing more than to complain, to whinge about how unfair this is. However, airing out one's dirty laundry is simply taboo among high society. To do so will make you a ripe target for the next dinner party chit-chat. Vultures, the lot of them, really. Or most of them, at least. There are always good ones, like Rochelle Lee. But put your trust in the wrong person and you'll find yourself eagerly picked apart. Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. Perhaps I'm being a bit too rash, a bit too hot-headed in divulging details. But I thought myself clever with the plan to dress it up as gossip. Marianne's raised brow makes me unsure whether she is interested or not. Although, that does make things better if she has no interest and therefore has no hidden intent to utilize whatever I might say to her. They've been married for a long time and they've had a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. I feel like she's talking about themselves and not actually Luke's friend. What do you think? What do I think of the matter, Mum? No, what do you think of my hair? It feels so lifeless and dull today, and that's no good for a party. And I think I'm breaking out into zits. Now that you mention it, there is something different. There better not be something on my face. I wouldn't worry about that. You do look a little paler than usual, ma'am. I apologize if I'm crossing any lines here, but have you been resting properly? Huh. You'd think I get a bit tanned with how sunny it's been lately. Don't you worry. I feel right as rain and never better. But back to the matter at hand. You were asking for my personal opinion on the matter, ma'am? Do you want me to be honest, or...? Do I want her to be honest? Yes, I want her to be honest. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth, bitch. Be honest with me, Marianne. I don't need someone to sugarcoat it. Hell yeah. I'm not some fragile thing that I'm just going to break down at the slightest thing. She hesitates, taking a sip of her coffee, while I stare at my own cup of tea. The silence stretches on, and I almost believe that she will never answer my question. I suppose that I shouldn't blame her, putting her in a tight spot like this. Her hesitation is understandable, though I loathe the... I loathe to admit it. She simply wants thing. She simply wants this whole thing to stay professional. But then she speaks. If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you, Mr. Wright, isn't it? It's my turn to hesitate now. I really didn't expect such a straightforward question. And to get to the heart of the matter. I suppose I'm not as clever as I thought as I'd like to think. Or is it really that bad that an outsider can see our little marital troubles? Surely we aren't that obvious, are we? We've put up an act of a perfect couple for years, although it hadn't always been an act. Marianne is just more keen than the average person, of course. It is, a necess uh, it is a necessity to her career, and she's been working so closely with us. Yes, that's it. Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But, if the troubled husband with a neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. 
Someone who won't even give him the time of the day. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. That's just my two pence worth, of course. So you're saying we... they should divorce? Nothing as drastic as that. If they're afraid that it might lead to just that, then maybe that is what's meant to happen in the first place. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. But it's just a short hiatus, is all. Or, you know, couples therapy? Look, I'm really not the best person to ask about relationships. So grain of salt and all that. Ah, I like that. That's good advice. Um, you know, sometimes you just need the space. You need to think about yourself rather than the person you're trying to please. And maybe the first person you should please is yourself. You know? Because if you're not pleased with yourself, how can you... Um, how can you expect to go about pleasing other people? But at the same time, don't let them ask too much of you. Because them asking too much of you is crossing the line. A, because there's only so much you can give before you can't give anymore. Anyways, <clears throat> she trails off, having said her piece, and leaves nothing but the smell of coffee and Earl Grey between us. There's a calm, despite the nature of what has just been discussed. To say that her words make me start to think is an understatement. To say that I'm not considering her advice is a lie. And to say that this might just be the calm before the storm is a possibility. Others have had shorter marriages, yes, but plenty have celebrated long and happy ones as well. My own parents celebrated their choral anniversary before they passed away. But seven years? Seven years isn't a whole... isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. It isn't a whole lot of time to see what and where our relationship can bring us. And at the same time, seven years... Well, it hasn't been entirely made up. Why did I have to get on right here? Ah, excuse me. Damn. Well, it isn't been. It hasn't been entirely made up of unhappy years, has it? It won't last forever. It's not supposed to, anyway. I just dread the thought that it might last for a very long time. The dread that thought. The dread the thought that these small spats, these little disagreements, will turn into an all-out resentment. The idea that we... The idea that we will grow to hate each other with every fiber of our being scares me. I can't even pinpoint the exact moment when our blissful union turned sour. When did he start to seek other women? Lacking any ulterior motives. When did we start to cooperate only to suit our materialistic greed and attention, seek and attention-seeking ways, money and success, fame and glamour? All those are only reasons we still stay together. <clears throat> there is a cough before Marianne clears her throat. I must have been quiet for so long and I moved to apologize when she stands up. We both end up on our feet, unsure of how to proceed. Thanks, I say. <laughs> I'm doing my best, thank you. <clears throat> so, some sort of odd, awkward shuffle occurs as we decide whether to sit back down or not. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. 
Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Oh. Diary, 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 diary. Ahem. <coughs> Hannah and Marianne were seen discussing the mansion's finishing touches before the house... The, before the housewarming party. On a whim, Hannah asked for Marianne's opinion about a certain couple having marital problems. It leaves the former with something to think about after the latter excuses herself from attending the party. Damn. Alrighty. <clears throat> the scene outside the parlor is a great organized mess. Aside from our household help, we hired the service of the Temp Agency, which provided, which provides staff for Wright Enterprise in the, in the hospital, in the hospital, in the hospital, uh, in the hospitality sector. Hospit, uh, fucking word. Hospil, hospil, uh, hospitality, hospitality. Fuck! I hate English. <laughs> we hired the service of the Tempt Agency, which provides staff for Wright Enterprise in the hospitality sector. It's so weird when you say a word out loud and then have to read the word because you're looking at the word and it looks different than what you think it would look like. <sighs> All right. Even though we, even though our our staff are, even though our very skilled staff cannot undertake a party of this size on their own. Waiters, busboys, host, hostesses, and their staff captains move about in droves, carrying crockery and ser serveware good for several dozen people and then some I sounded like Nemo for a second there I wouldn't be surprised if I sounded like Nemo for a second there I fucking hate words sometimes chefs and bartenders tailed after Johans looking like scared little children as he escorts them through the kitchen and into the wine cellar to Per uh, to peruse the stocks to select what can be served at the party and what can be used for cooking. Snails! We have a lot to do and I believe we did not hire snails. Snails are for the dishes. A string, uh, a string quartet re readies up to play for the evening, tuning their instruments as they fill the air with idle chatter. F flower de floral decor worth thousands filled, fill vases, wreaths and baskets while petals are scattered along the driveway up front. I love that I can read the word wreaths, but I can't read the word hospitality. Hospitality, yes, hospitality. Oh! I want that cake, bitch! Give me that cake. Hang on, I need. I feel a yawn coming on. Give me a second. Excuse me. <clears throat> An ice sculpture of a reindeer is brought in carefully by a pair. It is followed by a simple cake, just a five-tier white chiffon one, and uh, with white chocolate mousse and fresh berries and light. And a light dusting of edible gold leaf. Bro, my mom would hate this cake because she doesn't like white chocolate. But I would eat the hell out of this cake. Look at it. It's so good. But despite the fact that I told Marianne how I will attend to all of this. I find myself unable to focus or care for any of it. I still have our discussion running in my mind. And looking at all of this... I only see Luke everywhere. All of these are all the grand things that Luke wanted to have for the party. 
I wanted a small, elegant and simple gathering with only a select few invited, namely the people who I act who I would actually trust to enter my home. I did not want any bloody politicians or paparazzi in here, no matter how I how used uh, no matter how used I, I am to catering to them. At least be here for your party. Damn it, Luke. The entire thing screamed Luke Wright. And I can't help but add another question to my growing list of queries. When did I lose myself? It's always about him nowadays, isn't it? What about Hannah Wright? What about Hannah Evans? Rohan, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that. I fucking love white chocolate. Bro. I'm so big sad right now. I used to be my own woman. Who made her own name, her own career, and her own decisions? Sure, I was already the social butterfly that I still am today, but... It wasn't all empty. Shallow gossip and sitting pretty. I was also lauded for my knowledge and talent. Finance manager... Finance manager wasn't just handed to me just because my father owns the company I had insisted to start from the bottom I had insisted to start at the bottom so I could work my way to the top and prove myself and I did I worked numbers managed budgets money and accounts anal analyzing the com competition and market trends there was a calculation of financial risk, cost reduction opportunities, aud auditor li liaison, and public relations, supervision of staff, and... Well, I generally had a huge slew of responsibility. Admittedly, I was already quite the attention seeker even back then, having dedicated most of my youth craving my for my parents' approval. Failing that, I turned to others, looking for praise from anyone who would give it, however fleeting it all was. Oh, and Luke. Oh, Luke. The way he looked at me, the way he watched me and took a genuine interest. He had me dis disgustingly upset since day one, hasn't he? He saw me for me, Hannah Evans, with both my faults and my achievements. The man didn't treat me like some damsel in distress or some prize to be won. I remember the nights before we were married we, where we talked about everything and anything, from the big things like business, society and ph philosophy to little things such as what we had for breakfast or whether we liked dogs or cats more. We both preferred dogs. Nowadays, I'm just Luke Wright's wife. It's mostly my fault, isn't it? They told me that husbands preferred wives who are docile and subordinate. A woman who always be... A woman who will always be there for him, yet would never outshine him in all aspects except beauty. A wife needs to be a home, and attend to his needs, to have children, and to take care of them in his absence. They said I have no business working anymore after I was married. I blame society, but I listened. Before I can fall further into this introspective pit of self-loathing, someone calls for my attention. The guests have arrived, madam. And Luke, 
Running a bit late, I'm afraid. <sighs> late for his own party. That man, I swear. He's probably looking to make a dramatic entrance knowing him. Yeah, to be honest, she does deserve better. She does. She really does. Open the doors then. We mustn't hurry. Cars lined up the driveway, peppering the front of the mansion with vehicles of every kind. Grand tours, grand tours, supercars, even the odd high-end muscle car or two. Convertibles, grand saloons, and other luxury cars can be seen being parked by valets. A handful of cabs drove off, possibly for those who thought it true. Possibly for those who thought it's too troublesome to bring their own car. There are at least two different media vans as well. They're all here for what may be considered the biggest event for the of the year for Luxbourne so far. Who knows what who knows what we'll plan for the winter holidays? Welcome, welcome everyone. Please, make yourselves at home. Some of the guests idle, enjoying the warm of not... If not strange su sunshine, we are experiencing after gloomy skies inevitably return. They greet acquaintances and friends with warm smiles, other, others less so. From where I stand, I can see the hierarchy of power ties that bind these individuals here whether through convenience or necessity however there are also few who are not here to further cement their current place in the high society such as that young man with his oriental air ignorant if the look ignorant of the looks he receives from women and men alike be careful with Shirley, all right? Or the rose-haired woman w talking on her phone while she looks unsure of why she is here exactly. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. I see Zachary, the photographer, as well. He talks, a f he talks to a few of the other media crew while on air of familiarity with an air of familiarity i was just here a few days ago yeah yeah and the inside is huge but the staff are pretty helpful if you get lost <laughs> i had invited father norman as well uh, it's the least i can do after he blessed my mansion on my request aside from my small donation to the church of course but the poor man has taken ill and went through a nervous breakdown of some sorts the other day. On, and then there are people like the chief inspector. People who I can never be too sure about. People who stand on the border between being suspicious and being trustworthy. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. The doctor's again. Uh, she told me she'll just be in the gardens. I bet she's lying and that she's somewhere around mingling, gossiping with the other ladies. It's no offense, but that seems to be all you ladies do at these parties. And aren't you gossiping right now? Yes, well, what about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around you know i can tell if someone's bluffing don't tell me let me guess he's finally drunken himself to death and not wanting a scandal you've hidden his body i hate this guy i actually loathe this guy i fucking hate him if if hannah had paid me to assassinate this man i will gladly do it <laughs> he is scumbag i don't know he just gives me the feel of scumbag i don't know if you guys know what i mean but He's just giving me that feeling, and I don't like it. I was wanting to give this housewarming gift to him personally, too. It's a plate that holds a wine glass so he can stop killing himself with liquid lunches. Looks like it's too late for that. Nothing like that. Besides, this is a hardly polite conversation. 
Oh, relax. I'm just trying to be cheeky to lighten the mood. It's not like I want Luke dead. Uh, when someone says that, that's kind of sus. It's not like I want Luke dead. That's kind of sus, my guy. The man doesn't serve dodgy plonk like the others when I visit, and he pays his respects well enough. I could use a glass of wine or three, actually. Shell's been in a horrid mood. Threw a stilettos at me the other day and almost took an eye out. Not sure if this is how it usually goes, but I blame the pregnancy. I wouldn't know, would I? Still no plans for a baby. Well, I guess that's for the best. If it's this bad now, I can't even imagine how bad it'll be when that little baby bump becomes huge. Have I mentioned how I didn't trust him, no matter how hard I tried to do so? At least he brought a gift, I suppose. Why don't you just go inside and have some wine, Lee? Think I will, thanks. Greetings such as these carry on as the guests continue to trickle in. Whether we have short conversations or merely shake hands and nod heads, I make sure to attend and welcome each of them. At the first hour, as the first hour passes by, the rest of us, the rest of the stragglers and I adjourn to the ballroom. Any latecomers will have to attend. Uh, will have, fuck. Any latecomers will have the attention of the porters instead. I have other duties to attend to now. Hosting is always the same old song and dance, no matter how big and small it is. We make sure our, you make sure your guests are well fed, have good company, and have them generally enjoying themselves. So when my opening remark is done, uh, so when my opening remarks are done, when the band has started to play and the guests have started eating, I find myself wandering around aimlessly, unless I am pulled aside. For a while, I stay with a small group and entertain them before excusing myself. Excuse me, and when the. And when they're not any more watching me, I end up watching them. They don't. When they don't listen, I do. A local banker is having trouble with his daughter. He wishes to marry her off, but she wants nothing more than nothing, nothing more but to make music. One of our hotel managers worry about the stolen belongings of one of his patrons. Patrons, a failing in security which should be brought up to higher authority soon. Our mayor, well, his cat died. Then there is that rose-haired woman once again. It's hard not to notice her with her distinct locks. She also lacks the grace that the other ladies, the other ladies have, though it, that does not make her any less beautiful. Her stance and the air she exudes instead are strong and they make her stand out despite her casual attire. Many men have already given her their attention, though each invit invitation to dance has been turned down. I approached intrigued, although it's not, it is no great mystery what occupies her attention, her own attention, with the glance she keeps sending towards the boy with the oriental hair. She remains unaware though, even as I stand beside her, pretending that I'm there for a drink. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the... Parvenu, those who climb that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black haired beauty, isn't he? Mm hmm. He fucking is! <laughs> Except his sprite doesn't look. doesn't do him any justice. The boy comes over, but I do nothing to speak any softer. He merely passes by and. And it is a wonder he doesn't hear what I say. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down those offers. 
If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. In all my life, I've never seen a face grow red so fast. The shade of her hair did not help as well. This is the most pink I've ever seen a person, really. Oh, what? N no, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. And I haven't been looking at him. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. I waver as I feel the burning sensation of someone's stares. It's, it is chilling and though I am used to enduring the gaze of others, this one makes the hairs on my back, on the back of my neck stand up. Bruh, what? My attention is pulled from the girl as I see a woman staring. Dark haired and dirty. She looks more like a beggar than a guest. And I have half the mind to call the security at her when her mouth breaks out into a grin. I hear all I hear is her laughter. Taunting. Her stare makes my blood run cold. She looks at me like I am nothing but a pig to slaughter for her amusement. It makes my hand shake and I nearly drop my drink. In the blink of an eye, she's gone and the buzz of the party returns. I'll keep that in mind, but are you alright? Yes, uh, sorry. I just thought I saw something strange. It must be the trick of the light. Oh my god, I just glanced around the background to take a look. But damn, do you guys see this woman's butt? Hi, Signy. Welcome to the stream. Hello, hello, hello. That woman has a cake, I tell ya. Damn. Anyway, on a right, as you must already know. Rebecca Gales. Gales, Gales, Gales. The name is familiar, like a fond memory. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> it might have been a mistake to watch a horror gameplay before. Yes! Probably a mistake, Yang. Also, thank you, Makoto, for the redeem. I shall howl. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> oh. Don't stare. I'm not gonna stare. I'm gonna be reading. <laughs> Damn, Stigny. You come in here, just tell me not to stare? <laughs> woof woof to you too, my friend. <laughs> Damn, objectifying women. Live on Twitch. Cancelled! No! <gasps> no! <laughs> I didn't objectify her, by the way. I just said she had a nice ass. You're here to support the cutie. Ah, thank you, Signy. Yeah, I'm just appreciating the lady's butt. Just like how I appreciate my own ass. Ahem, <clears throat> anyways. I recall a kind lady, a private tutor who taught, who treated me like her own daughter when I was young. She'd even bring me food when there was no need to do so. Ah, uh, thanks, Yang, for the hydrate. And if you're heading to bed, then have a good night. I hope, uh, I hope you, um, have sweet dreams. <laughs> I won't die. Well, I don't know if the characters will die. But so far, it's been okay. I've been able to handle it, so it's fine. The ass is indeed nice. Yeah. I'm gonna stretch really quick. Ugh.
شده او مای گاد یو تراین تو میک یو فال داون اگین یا ای فال داون بیفور می Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Host mother just came in to give me uh, my laundry to hang up. And she was like, do you want to turn off the light? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's my answer. No. She told me to turn it off later. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to turn it off later. I'll probably turn on my lamp. Um, it'll waste less electricity, I guess. Yeah. She'd even bring me food when there was no need to do so. Usually stovies, which I honestly hadn't been too keen about, though I ate them nonetheless because she brought them for me. Oh, the professor! And your little Becky! <sighs> My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And Mom says hi, by the way. But yeah, that's me, little Becky. We met once before. Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lab called something with an A. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander, Andrew? I feel like it was Ash again. The more I list off names, the more red and the more quiet Becky gets. She stares at... She starts to look a bit miserable as her body language shows discomfort and stiffness. Perhaps I have triggered a horrid childhood memory. Surely I hadn't mean... Uh, surely I hadn't been mean when she visited with her mother? I don't quite remember at all. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one. Oh goodness me, after all these years! I can see why, though. He's quite dashing. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. <laughs> <laughs> so all of them actually know each other, except for Isabella, because Isabella only met Hannah and uh, Luke, like, on the ha open house. But basically, everyone knows each other. And a tad bit sad. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Please, Anna is fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh, and what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? Uh, the idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have to work at it. <laughs> but what do I know? There is a grimace, although she starts to relax around my presence. How long has it been since we met as children? Certainly a long time. She was tiny back then, if I recall correctly. I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. But have you told him how you feel? And it's been what? 20 years? 17, actually. But no, not yet. He can be a bit... dense. I was hoping that maybe he'd notice on his own and... Well, that won't do. What if you two become husband and wife? He's not to be dense when he's sworn himself to another person. Why, you might just as well consider leaving before the day's even begun. If that happens, I'll have to give him a good ear bashing, won't I? Whoever anyone ends up with, it's not going to be a perfect relationship anyway. There's going to be things you'll love and things you'll hate about the other person. We're just humans. It's funny. Here I am, trying to give you advice when you did the very same thing back then. 
I remember you giving me a makeover when we were still kids. And you were the first I told anyone about my... <laughs> crush. I do remember now that she mentions it. Did I give her a yellow sum... Did I give her that yellow summer dress or the pink blouse and petticoat? She must have kept some of what I said in mind. It feels ridiculous remembering all those, all of that years later, talking about boys and how they go crazy for pretty girls, as if, the, as if it's some gospel every woman should he adhere to. It was so easy. It was. It was so easy to say such things back then. With me not knowing any better. Though, looking at her now, she must have kept some of what I said in mind. Perhaps I did something good at the time. Enough to... enough for her to take it to heart. All, but all that didn't matter in the moment as I mull over what she said in my head. What Becky told me is very different from what Marianne told me. There's no time to ponder over that, however, as a hush descends upon the once lively crowd. The, music's, the music of strings and chatter slow to a grinding halt as the door from the foyer opens. The last of the latecomer has, should have arrived moments ago, and anyone else this late would simply be too embarrassed to show their face. So this could only be one person, or rather, one man. There is only one man who's, who is audacious enough to arrive at his own party so late. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. Unlike I, who has, who is raised in the spotlight and simply grew used to its presence, he sought it out every chance he could, even when there, is no, there was no spotlight to be shone. And I'll never put it against him, but when he smiles like that, he did so quite brilliantly under the scrutiny when he channels his showmanship. You can tell by the way someone's eyes light up as he speaks. How they listen, enraptured, even if all he's doing is a simple greeting. A little wave of his hand here, and a little smile there, and a bit of a swagger. I always tell him that if it is not, if he is no, not to be a businessman, he'll do well as an entertainer. I love this side of him, especially when he looks at me and beckons me over to humbly share his place. Not a single second is wasted as I excuse myself from Be Becky's side and make my way to Luke's. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> so enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. There's a round of applause, cheers, and even sound, even some hoots. Guests approach us left and right and shake Luke's hand and greet him personally, praises on their lips. It is because of this that I do not see her. I do not see her until she's dangerously close, with fury in her eyes, and she's already spitting venom. Johan... Johan restrains her, taking care of, taking care not to unnecessarily harm the pregnant woman. But it does not, but it does little to deter her rage, and the man has no choice but to let her go, lest an unborn child is hurt. Although it might be too, although it might be too late for that, as I see an empty glass of wine in her hand. How much has has she embittered in invited in? Give me a sec, let's read this. The right mansion officially opens its doors with a grand house warming feast. Zachary Steele, Ashton Frey Frey? Is it Frey or Grey? I can't remember. Is it Grey or Frey? Frey, Grey, Frey, Grey. Which one is it? 
doesn't say. Ashton Frey. I'm gonna say it's Ashton Frey, because I can't fucking remember right now. Uh, where was it? Fuck. No, we lost it, we lost it, we lost it! No! Oh, we lost it! No, we haven't. Um... Ashton Frey and Rebecca Gales were seen attending. However, what was supposed to be a day of merriment turned sour when Rochelle Lee, the chief inspector's wife, accuses Luke Wright of fathering her unborn baby. What? That's... Oh. Imbited. Imbited? Yeah. Imbited. Are you feeling ill, Rochelle? Perhaps you need to sit down and... No! Shut it, you monster! I ain't talking to you! I'm talking to this scumbag over here! <gasps> Bro! You bloody bastard standing there with your smarmy smile! She interrupts me, jabbing her finger in my direction before she rounds on Luke. Even a whisper and murmur breaks out among the guests. All I can focus on is the heat of the moment. Obviously intoxicated, judging by the smell of alcohol on her in on her breath. I'm not ticked off about this little display of hers, at least not yet. But I'm absolutely pissed by the fact that she's endangering her own baby by drinking. There is a considerable amount of restraint and grace that I must ex exercise while I wait for her tantrum to subside. I need I keep a patient if tight smile on my face. Luke's expression, on the other hand, is indecipherable. Watch your tongue! You're on thin ice, Rochelle! Where's your husband? Who even invited you? I did. And I told you with great emphasis not to. Now we have a drunk, hormonal, pregnant woman causing a stir. What is even going on? I am just about to ask the exact same question. Oh, wait, wait. I was about to... Uh, oh, what? English! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter, pitter-patter. <clears throat> I am just about to ask the exact same thing. I don't know. But Rochelle, do calm down before you hurt yourself. I can't understand a word you're saying. Where is that husband of yours? Lee, collect your wife right now. Don't you fucking talk like I'm not here and you're not responsible, you ass. You told me that I should wait for you in the gardens. Excuse me. What is this nonsense you're going on about? Crazy talk. That's all it is. Just completely and utterly mad. Has anyone seen the chief inspector? I am pregnant with your little bastard. You promised me you'll take responsibility. God damn it, Luke. I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me. What? What? W what do you mean you're pregnant with? Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband! I told you to leave that damn wife of yours! <gasps> oh my look god! At her. Does she look like she wants a baby? <gasps> Does she look like she can take care of a baby? Bitch, what?! Oh my god, okay, 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 I hate to end it here, because, damn, I'm just torturing you guys with this cliffhanger, but, we are out of time! <laughs> I really, I really do want to continue, but I have to time constraint myself, because the last few days with stream, I've been going overtime. Um, I say last few days, but last few collabs, I've been going a little bit overtime. Um, and, uh, I've basically been taking up too much time of my day streaming and not doing anything else so I need to catch up on a few things but 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 thank you everybody so much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed it um, I really do I am I'm gonna save it again just in case <laughs> all right all right all right, all right, all right. damn with the amount of times that Hannah said that um, with the amount of times that Hannah said that Rochelle was such a good friend to her, I would imagine that she would have been, like, a good friend, right? But 
Excuse me. Damn. Was that a reaction or what? Um. So. Wow. Okay. I'm just gonna. <sighs> Blows my mind. <laughs> it's impressive, I tell ya. Alright, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave it at a cliffhanger right there. I'm so sorry that you guys have to leave with that. But. I'm very excited to to whenever it is that we play it again. So thank you, my little thieves, so much for coming to today's stream. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. We're going to hunt for somebody to raid. And while I'm hunting for somebody to raid, why don't you guys who haven't already joined the Discord server, join us, in, join us backstage. Um, I do try to chat with you guys uh, as much as I can, at least. Um, and if you haven't... If you haven't already, uh, follow me on my socials. Uh, that includes DeviantArt, Twitter, and YouTube. DeviantArt for just my art stuff. Um, Twitter for everything. And YouTube for, um, well, every other one of my contents. Um, that, well, the other contents that I make other than streaming, of course. Uh, I'll be working on those post haste. <laughs> so, uh, okay, okay, we're gonna rate this person. Uh, Jade Young Leaf. They, they, they are playing Apex right now, so uh, it will be a change of pace for sure. Uh, Jade, Young Leaf. I hope you show them some support. Uh, here is your raid message, guys. If you haven't already had, uh, if I didn't already do that. So there's your raid message, guys. We're gonna go see them. Uh, play nice, okay. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me and sticking with me for the three hours. Um, yeah. Thank you all so much for coming once again. And I'll see you, my little thieves, in the next one. Bye!